What up? It's the Rap Throwback. We are back in the house. Yo, yo, what's up, man? Uh, not much. It is uh, it is Megatron here with the uh, Dre Forty Ounce, aka Soundwave, on the line. What's uh, happening, man? We up in the house. Yeah, yeah. It's podcast day. Right, episode number forty-three, I think. Something like forty-three. Like yeah, forget, man. It's crazy. Every time I um, I look at the episode, it's like, damn. Crazy. Yeah, crazy. I'm almost at fifty. Yeah, I have to do something special for fifty. Right, a little bicentennial <laughs> something. No. Yeah, we'll, we'll review Fifty Cent, maybe. Who knows? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there you go. Yeah. What's been going on this week, dude? Oh, not too much, man. Just uh, working and dad life. Just doing the uh, just, uh, everyday thing, man. Just uh, trying to check out some new music. Yeah. Found some um, found Fred Rex greatest hits. He's got like three Spotify. of those, right? Yeah, he's got three of them, man, and uh, I listened to all three of them yesterday, and I was like, damn, man, there's a lot of good shit on there. Really? Um, a lot of music I haven't heard, and of course, a lot of stuff I did hear, and there's some shit that I didn't even know he produced. Really? You know, and I was like, oh, shit, okay, he did that one, huh? Nice. So, uh, like, uh, Gangsta Nation, I didn't know he did that, you know? Gangsta Nation. Uh, West Side Connection. No way. And they thought... Yeah. I don't know who I thought did that. Yeah, I wasn't sure either, but when they said Fred Rack, I was like, oh, okay. I mean, you know, he's done work with 50 Cent. And, uh, you know, there's some cool people. He's got stuff with KRS One. Oh, really? Uh, yeah. Uh, well, of course, he's got the normal guys at the East Siders. Yeah. Know, Dog Pound. Uh, But yeah, he's got some Cypress Hill on there too. Obi Trice, Fifty Cent, Mob Deep. I wonder if uh, if this some unreleased stuff too. Oh, are do those feature other rappers? Like who's on those unreleased tracks? Uh, he's got one with Gorilla Black. It's unreleased. Um, I don't know why that one never came out, but uh, he's got some stuff with Corrupt and Will Half Dead. Mm. I don't know why they weren't released, but um, got a couple remixes in there too. Man, little half dead. He never does anything. Mm-mm. Crazy. I wonder whatever happened to Gorilla Black too. I mean, I never had him on my uh, rotation, but uh, you know, he was always out there. Yeah, he ended up going to jail. Ah, okay. So or prison. I, I'm not sure which one. Who's gone for a long time well hey that's a pretty dope find though uh fred yeah. Reck. damn um i wonder Man. if it's available anywhere else or is it just spotify it's crazy yeah that i'm not sure so yeah man go check that shit out man it's a lot of good west coast shit and then, i don't know if you saw this on spotify but under the new releases it had an easy e track on there it's an imposter easy e an imposter easy e yeah dude what the album was called, this the song's called originated and it's by easy e and gentle lion okay i did hear about that somebody on facebook said they don't know why easy e's credited on it cuz he's not on the track no is, he's not is it somebody going by easy e now or just trying to get some hits off of easy's name so I'm confused because the cover has Easy E without a dash, right? And then Spotify, when they have it listed, it has the dash in the name. So I think they fucked up. It should be Easy E without the dash. Does the cover have his, uh, like the artwork, have Easy's face on it or anything? No, it's just like um, some, uh, you know, greenage in the mountains. Yeah. Uh, There's no pictures of anybody here. It's just scenery. Sounds like some shady shit to me. But yeah, if you're using Easy E as your name, then you fucked up. I don't care how you spell it. You know, there's only one Easy E. That's one of those names that you can't fucking gank. 
Yeah, no kidding. It's like a it's like a retired jersey number, man. You can't use that shit. <laughs> Word. Yeah, I hate it when people uh these some of these new rappers on Spotify will take like an old name or some shit. Yeah. It's like oh God. Yeah, there's there's a fake Ant Banks out there and a fake Frost. I know there's a couple more, but Yeah. They all yeah, King T, there's a fake King T out there. It's great. Uh, they'll pop up on my new release radar and I'm like, Oh, oh man. Yeah. Stupid. That's cool, man. That's cool. Nothing much else on the news rap front that I found this week, you know. Um, you know, Nas is a, uh, you know, King's Disease. There's still a buzz around that. You know, people discussing it. Um, yeah, part two. Yeah, King's Disease too. So that's kind of cool. Um, I guess we're getting one more album from, is it Kendrick Lamar? Who announced his oh, yeah. last record? Oh man, I don't believe that shit. Yeah. Why? Why would it be his last one? I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. I guess I still don't believe the game is retired. Um, I, I don't know. I always find it interesting when these rappers say they're going to stop because you know it's in the blood. You're inspired by other good music. You know, yeah. You're, you hear another rapper's badass album, and you're like, "Damn, man, I need to make another album or something." You know, it's like you feed off the music. So I don't know how they can like really retire. Have we ever had a rapper really retire? Like I'm thinking, Too Short. He came back. He came back. Every yeah. album Esham does is his last album. He says. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. Even Jay Z is still what? Isn't he coming out with another album? Yeah, he is. Yeah. So, and it's one of those things where, you know, these guys can rap forever if they want to, you know? Yeah. I don't know. I almost feel like the retirement talk is just to generate more buzz. Yeah. Or maybe to get some pressure off their back of ever having to drop another record, like on a yearly basis yeah, or something. Yeah, I could see that. Kendrick just kind of dropped his stuff whenever. I mean, he dropped one unannounced one time. And, hmm. uh, that's interesting. That's yeah. cool. I'll, hmm. I'll check that out. I like the last one he had down. Yeah. Other rappers that won't retire, Nas, you know, been doing yeah. this for a long time. I think, you, I think this is a... Uh, his latest it must be like album number eighteen or something. Hard to keep track. I think it's thirteen. Um let me see what the Google machine says. Looking at the discography here and let's see. I guess we can count the lost tapes. Well, maybe this list doesn't really count the lost tapes. So we got one, two, three, four. So you're right then. It would be 13 records that he's released. Yeah. Um, the lost tapes would make it like maybe 15 if they counted those. He dropped two of those. Yeah. One, two. And he's got the essential NOS. I don't know what that is. Um, and I guess those count as greatest hits. So, oh man, I can't forget about his mixtape too. The nigga tape. <laughs> <laughs> and they don't spell it. Is that a mixtape? That wasn't yeah. an official album? No. That one, he had a mixtape, and then he had Untitled. Uh, so, oh, it was Untitled. Yeah, Untitled came out afterwards. And Wikipedia is not spelling the N-word, <laughs> the gangsta way. That's pretty funny. Maybe that's how it was officially spelled. I don't remember... I remember having it though. I don't remember how I got it. I guess uh, just downloaded, it, of course. Yeah, I guess I just downloaded it. I don't know if it was for sale. But yeah, I remember that tape or that mixtape. It was cool. Um, yeah, so yeah, about 13, 13 real actual LPs in. 
It's not a bad uh, a, count. No, that's that's good, man. That's From ninety four. A lot. Ninety four to twenty one is what? What is that? Like seventeen years, something like that. Nah, it's got to be more than that. I don't know. It might. It, I just know we're old. <laughs> I just know we're old, man. I don't know. Um, but yeah. So yeah, today. We're going to check out King's Disease 1. Uh, it's another new record for us, you know, that we didn't really check out. So right. that's I pretty cool. might have heard it one time when it dropped on release day, and that's it. I, I didn't yeah. really come back to it. And when I did hear it back then, I didn't really put a lot into it either. Yeah. So it was basically new to me. Yeah. Uh, same here. Basically new to me. I don't think I ever heard any of it. Maybe I gave it a quick listen. I was like, I don't know. I'll give it another shot. And I never got back to it. Um, but it seems like after life is good, Nas kind of went a little bit more. Well, I shouldn't say that. I was going to say he got a little more underground. Like maybe he didn't sell as much, but Actually, it would only be one record that really didn't sell as much, and that would be Nasser. That came out in 2018. Nasser. Yeah. All his other ones went gold, at least. Gold and platinum. But... Okay, that one didn't. No, I don't think Nasser did. Um, But I can guarantee that King's Disease 1 and 2 have probably went gold and platinum. I'm I'm guessing. I mean, after all the attention, I mean, he got an award for King's Disease One, and pretty, uh, you know, strategically, he came out with Part Two just like, like a year, not even a year after, close, but not quite. Right. So, living off that buzz. Well, he didn't he win something for King's Disease One. Yeah, wasn't it like a Grammy or something? Yeah, he won a Grammy. There you go. Yeah. So, critically acclaimed. Yeah. So, you know, he's uh, still doing his thing here. He's no longer on Def Jam. I don't know who actually is on Def Jam anymore. I don't even know if Rick Ross is on Def Jam. I know Snoop Dogg has a job at Def Jam. Yeah, I heard about that, but I didn't really, like, read into it too much yeah they're uh, there. I guess they just signed a rapper that sounds like Jay-Z like oh that's the worst I can't even imagine I don't know we really need another one yeah do we it's crazy um but other than that I don't know who's on Def Jam you know back in the day it was like Method Man Red Man Jail Felony BG Knockout and Drasta did their thing there. Yeah. Um, yeah. Slick Rick, of course. Probably the, like the pioneer. And countless others. But I couldn't even tell you today. Uh, it's, I don't know why. It's more of a, just a distribution thing now, I guess. Who knows? But um, yeah. I'd be curious to see if uh, Rick Ross is still there. It, it seems to me like Rick Ross probably has more money than Def Jam these days, or he could just buy him out if he wanted. Um, yeah, I don't even know if he needs a label anymore. Yeah, I think... Payback, good thing. I don't think he needs a label, really. It's easy enough to get your music out without a middleman these days, especially if your name is big. Yeah. So. Yeah, exactly. He needs, they can drop the label now yeah so back to the record um we got uh one producer on here is that right i or did dr dre do anything on it i thought maybe he might have did the uh no the firm. he didn't no he didn't do the firm he, truck huh no but all hit boy and he had a little help on some but he's credited as the producer I didn't really know too much about Hit Boy until I was, you know, looked this album up. Yeah, uh, I never really, Hit Boy never got on the radar. I guess I never heard of him until even part two came out and I saw it was, you know, produced by Hit Boy. And I was like, who's that? Yeah. 
and uh, he's been he's been busy, you know. He's got some uh, yeah. some shit with uh, Bun B and uh, Mariah Carey, among others. Oh yeah, he's he's got a, a you know good resume on him for sure. Yeah, I guess yeah. he's uh he's always been nominated yeah, okay. for some work and stuff. You know, a lot of his work gets nominated for Grammys. Like, uh, I don't know, in 2013, as early as that, he won for best rap song, Niggas in Paris. Oh, yeah, Kanye and Jay-Z. Yeah, so he did some work on that. So, you know, and then countless others where he was nominated, you know, uh, 14, all the way to 21, really, you know, Beyonce, Lemonade, Sicko Mode, I don't know, Rex in the Middle, some of these I just never yeah. really heard of, you know. Um, so I could see why he wasn't really on the radar, because he wasn't really in rotation, at least on our end. That and like the the artists that he's working with are so big too, you know, like Jay Z, Kanye, you know, these guys, Mariah Carey, all those like their name as an artist kind of takes over. You don't really yeah. Think about the when it comes to those guys. Yeah. Um, working with Nas is probably a good idea. He doesn't get overshadowed too much. I'm not sure he cares because his name isn't really yelled out that much or anything, and he gets right. paid the same regardless. <laughs> so, so, yeah, you know, Hit Boy, someone new to us anyways. Um, Nas, of course, not that new. Um, right. you know, we haven't always bumped Nas. I started, I, I kind of fell into the stillmatic phase or the stillmatic era and then, uh, started following Nas a bit after that. Um, anything earlier is kind of a mystery still. I got a little bit of Godson, um, but then there's other records like I Am and even Illmatic. I only heard like once or twice. So... That's kind of our history on the Nas stuff. So take our review however you want, but th- that's yeah, yeah. kind of where we're at, man. We're West Coast guys primarily. Um, but and, and you know, myself even less experienced with Nas than you. So yeah, definitely um, take my opinion with the brain. <laughs> yeah, well, hey, we're gonna give our thoughts regardless, man. Right. So. Well, you're tuned in, so you're gonna hear it. That's right. What'd you think of the cover? Uh, the cover was interesting and only because it's so different than the new one. You know, I, I think the cover is cool. You know, it looks like you got these angels and, you know, the chair with the crown, which yeah. I'm guessing is supposed to, you know, to signify that Nas is king. And, uh, you know, I think King's disease uh, was referencing like gout or something. I don't know. But you see all these foods and stuff that, you know, basically got with the king's disease. So I think that's kind of what he was going with that. Yeah, which is crazy. It's kind of a weird uh, name, album title. I mean, the the phrase itself, king's disease, is cool. Um, yeah. But then when you know what, what's behind it, you know, which is like right. you know, acid, uric levels, whatever. <laughs> like, what's up? Yeah, yeah, this? yeah. I thought that was weird. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, you see all those foods that, you know, pretty much they say if you eat those in plenty, you're going to get gout. Yeah, and that's why kings used to get it because they would just, like, devour get all the out. good stuff, yeah. you know. And uh, there's no way of avoiding it. I mean, there is, of course, but, like, for kings back then, you know, that's how they ate, just all the good stuff and a lot of liquor. So naturally yeah. they would just get it. And they were probably like the only guys in the land to get it because they were eating so well. Who knows? I know, right? Oh, the king can't walk so well today. I know. <laughs> like, uh, and that m- might have been a mystery back then. They probably had no idea, you know? Yeah, I don't know when they figured out or when, you know, they actually diagnosed the disease and figured out what's going on and whatever. And I tried to find... um like the explanation of why he named it that way. And I'm sure it's probably in interviews or something, 
but uh, I just didn't, I, I couldn't find it necessarily. I don't know. Sometimes I, I, Nas will really overthink his work, and um, I'm just not willing to dig that far sometimes. Right, right. To look for it. But, you know, I think right. it's a cool uh, concept, cool title, cool cover. I also read that uh, Hit Boy, Hit Boy and Nas were supposed to hook up in 2012. Oh, they but, were? Um, Hit Boy lost the hard drive and that album never came out. Mm, way to go, Hit Boy. So they didn't they didn't reunite until this guy in 2018. So pretty interesting. I guess some of it hit on the lost tapes too. Oh yeah. But, uh, I don't I don't know which tracks those are or anything like that. Huh. Well, then I guess that truly was a lost tape <laughs> album. You know. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> kind of cool. I wonder if they found the hard drive. Or I wonder how that got on the on the lost tapes. But yeah. Regardless little history on uh, Nas and Hit Boy there. So, all in all, 13 songs, one bonus, 38 minutes and 20 seconds. Kind of a short record, but it doesn't overstay its welcome. Um, Mm -mm. Yeah. So let's run it back. Let's run it back. All right. So the first track, you know, King's Disease. I thought it was a cool track. Um, This was the first time I really heard hit boy or at least closely listened to what he was going to bring. I was impressed. I liked that the beat was kind of uh, different and um, I thought it was a pretty good introduction into the record. What did you think about uh, King's disease? King's disease was cool track, you know, title track is kind of like you said, the intro was more mellow. Um, which kind of did set you up for the rest of the album. You know, now that we've listened to it, we kind of, you know, got the vibe for it. So, uh, yeah. King's Disease is cool. I dug it. Yeah. And then, you know, the second track can always like make or break a record, as, you know, we always say. I thought that the second track they picked was perfect, uh, you know, Blue Bins. It was his probably his most gangster track on here. Um, yeah probably my favorite track on here too. Uh, great way to, you know, keep you hooked to listen to the next or the rest of the album really. So. Yeah. One of the more energetic ones, you know, that one's got a good vibe and definitely you could put that one on a playlist and bump that shit for sure. Yeah. yeah, um, that but is, I liked it. Yeah. I think it's one of Nas's best tracks, you know, that you can put on a Nas playlist for sure. Um, then we have Car 85, upbeat track. Uh, he goes into really describing, you know, back in the day, a car and the system and, you know, the different scenarios and just looks like he's just going back in time again here. You know, he's having, it's, it, this is one of his flashback raps about back in the day. Uh, and the Car 85, I don't know exactly what that is, but... I guess if I Googled it hard enough, I could figure out exactly, or listen to the lyrics again and really dissect it if yeah. I wanted to, to figure it out. But I, it's a cool track. I think the beat is an upbeat. You know, it's an upbeat track, and, uh, you know, it does its job. It's cool. What do you think? Party 5 was dope. It, yeah, kind of piqued my interest in, like, what they could possibly be talking about. You know, we did a quick Google search on the podcast. Didn't really find anything, but... Um, yeah, it was a cool track. I dug it. Then we got four. He kind of stays on uh, Ultra Black. He kind of stays on the upbeat mood. You know, the record's going through this upbeat swing right now. I like the lyrics in Ultra Black. Uh, you know, I like uh, he's talking about his people, and then he's talking about the color and just uh, giving us some cool uh, rhymes with it. I, I, I like the track. I don't skip it. I don't know if it's one of my favorite Nas tracks, but I like it on this record. Yeah, it was good. Ultra Black. Um, that was the single, so uh, that's what they were kind of trying to put out there as, you know, the, I guess the radio track. Yeah. I don't know what you really go for with the single nowadays, but um, yeah, I don't, I don't Ultra know. Black is cool. I like the play on words in that song. And then the fifth track. 27 Summers. 
I think it goes a little bit more into a serious mode here with the beat. At least that's the way it starts. And I guess from this year, he's talking about it's been 27 years since his uh, first record. Um, At least that's what I've read. But I like the beat. Kind of goes back into the almost like a darker beat at this point after having some upbeat tracks before it. Did you like that track? What do you think? 27 Summer. Yeah, it was cool. You know, just kind of reflecting back on, you know, his success. And, um, yeah, it was a cool track. I dug it. I didn't realize that the 27 Summers meant 27 years from his debut album. But, yeah. uh, that's pretty cool, man. There, there was also another reference that 27 summers could have been referencing the 27 club which i guess is a, a group of famous artists who died at 27 oh really that's interesting yeah. too yeah. yeah who knows the track after that replace me i think that was a, a softer track um i don't know if it's if i'd skip it i probably would if i wasn't in the mood you know but i was able to let the record run through its thing. Um, but it is a softer track. I'm not going to say it's one of the highlights. What do you think about Replace Me? This is Big Sean and uh, Don Tolliver, you know. Big Sean does his thing. He's, I don't know if you can say he's a poor man's Drake or yeah, something. it's all good. I mean, like you said, probably not one of the highlights. Um, I don't know if it's one I would listen to either. Yeah. And then, you know, it continues, in my opinion, on this uh, soft theme here with Till the War is One. Not as soft as Six. He's got kind of uh, some deeper lyrics, I would guess, in Till the War is One. But it is, you know, the I think that the demographic is still going for that soft, you know, that soft ball. <laughs> it's a soft pitch here. Right. And um, Lil Dirk who is, hasn't really been on the radar. He sounds okay, you know, if you're into that. Not my thing, really, this little Dirk dude. Well, yeah, the little Dirk was doing the um, auto-tune stuff, right? Yeah. Um, yeah, no, didn't really dig that. Hey, <laughs> I'm going to steal from Act 10 here a little and say, uh, I give T-Pain his props, and that's where it stops. There you go. Yeah. I'll even take it back and, you know, Roger and Zap, you know, like yeah, the, that's, the originals. It's way back in the day. All Bad. I thought All Bad was a chill track, the eighth track of the record here. Uh, not too bad of a track. Nothing to write home about, in my opinion. But Nas doesn't really uh, go too crazy on these tracks. He remains consistent with his rhymes and the way that he's uh, flowing. And, uh, well, the rhymes and then the just the, the vibe of the album, you know, it's a chill album. You know, there's not a lot to, there's not a lot of uh, upbeat energy in it. It's yeah. pretty chill. It's a pretty chill track. Um, if I, you know, I should do like a graph on how I, how I think this record goes, you know, like up, down, whatever, <laughs> you know, I need spreadsheets now to, to, to form my opinions. <laughs> All right. The definition, this one, he, he, it's a, it's a cool track. I like it. Um, you know, this Hit Boy guy is really doing well, and I'm I'm surprised at this point uh, how much quality. And but you know that's it's he's he's not a new booty. <laughs> he's no. a new dude. You know, so I'm only surprised because I never paid attention to the guy. Nas's flow is fun on here. It reminds me of Rick Ross a lot. But these guys are friends. You know, so. Yeah, that who knows? It, it's cool when when that can happen. Um, yeah, it might ended up being like a really short track too. It's kind of yeah, it was a short track. Cool. Full circle with the firm. You know, I've li- I've heard these guys every now and then on Nas's uh, past records. Um, it was kind of neat to hear Foxy Brown again because that's somebody yeah. who might actually be retired. Retired. So right. it was kind of special to hear her again, just to get that, you know, that voice from the past. Um, you know, the beat's yeah, all right. Yeah, you know, I, 
Yeah, I I actually like the beat. That was kind of one of the ones that stood out to me. Um, but it was good to hear her voice again. I kind of made me want to go back and hear some of that old music that she did. Um, yeah. Because to me, she sounds a little different. But, mm-hmm. um, but yeah, it was good to, to hear the firm. Yeah. I haven't heard them in forever. Nah, it's been a long time. Um, so after the firm here, we got 10 points. Our 11th track here. What'd you think about that track? I'm trying to remember it in uh, my head now. Yeah. 10 points. It oh, had that cool yeah. little beat. That's right. Know. The MJ um, and LeBron references. Is that true? Yeah. 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 Just, yes. Okay. So just kind okay. of, you know, kind of telling people to smarten up and get their, you know, I guess their priorities straight, but, uh, 10 points. It was cool track. Um, I like the beat. It was catchy. It was one of the ones that was more catchy to me. Yeah. Um, and this is one of the tracks where hip Boy switches it up, right? Like in the middle of the track or something. Yeah. And that's what I said. I liked about how he can do that successfully anyways. And then we got the 12 track, the cure. Um, this is actually how the record supposed to go out as a final track. And I think it's perfect for a final track. It's upbeat. It's uh, it just sounds like, you know, the final song of a record. And yeah, yeah I think they did well. And, you know, and with it being called the cure kind of puts closure on the disease and all that. So I like, yeah. I like the idea of the track and, and the title and everything is a good outro track. Yeah, same here, same here. Good way to go out. And spicy. It's a it's a bonus track. It's all right. You know, I like right. the hook on it. I like uh Nas's part on it. I don't know about these other rappers on it. I don't really know them. But you know, since it it is a bonus track, I get it. Um and like we were saying, it's probably the draw for younger ears or people that have those rappers on their radar, which is just outside of my ballpark. So I, I get it. It's an upbeat track for sure. It's kind of a party track, really. Something that I would probably expect Swiss Beats to produce. but Yeah, yeah. I mean, the beat was cool, and that's really all I can say about it. I mean, it was... I probably wouldn't bump it again. Yeah. So all in all, you know, we listened to it, ran it down track by track... What do you think, man, as a whole of uh, this project, King's Disease, Part um, 1? Yeah, this is the fourth time I've heard it going through it on the podcast. And, you know, it it grows on me. Um, you know, I, I know that Nas is kind of a different vibe anyways. Uh, so the fact that it's a little more laid back, a little more chill, uh, is cool with me. You know, that's kind of what I was expecting. Yeah. Um, but I like the theme. I like the ideas. Um, for the most part, I, I like the album, you know, I, um, I'm probably give it like a seven and a half. Yeah. Maybe, uh, maybe, a, yeah, I'm thinking seven and a half. 7.5. Mm-hmm. So I think that, uh, well, I'm going to give it. And reason being, there's just kind of some of the content was just not not right up my alley. Yeah. Maybe my, I'm not diversified enough to to appreciate it. Like some of the the love songs and, you know, that type of stuff. Yeah. It's kind of cut into how many bangers he's got. So that's kind of why I justified the 7.5. Gotcha. I, listening to it, you know, First of all, I didn't want to listen to this record. I put it off for like, I I don't know, a year, I guess. I remember when it first came out, we just started this podcast. Um, yeah. And I really just put it off because I liked the, what I knew from Nas at that point. I'm like, I don't know, man. He fucks it up. I don't know. Um, but I'm glad I listened to it. Uh, I think I can keep it in rotation. Um, the softer, it, it seems to go through these weird like phases where it gets soft and then it gets chill and he doesn't really go into his darker persona much on this record. And that's all right. Why should he, you know, at this point, um, I really like 
the way it starts. I like the way it ends, which is crazy. I like the way it starts and I like the way it ends. And in the middle, it's kind of like a mixed bag, you know? Mm-hmm. A little up and down in the middle. Yeah. So I think your score is, is, is pretty fair. You know, I, I'd give it a 7.5 as well. Um, I'm going to give it 7.5 Raider Oakland hats, ultra blacks. That was like my favorite <laughs> line, man. Oh, like, yeah, yeah, that's right. Wow. What are, what's your favorite beat on here? You know, give us your three standout tracks. If you have three standout tracks to pick and well, your favorite beat. I mean, my favorite beat probably goes to Blue Bend because it's aggressive, it's harder. You know, one of the more gangster tracks. Yeah. But I appreciate the beat on Full Circle. I thought that was cool. And then um, Ten Points and The Cure. I like those two beats too. Just, you know, Ten Points because of how it switched up. And then The Cure just kind of had like a, a royalty vibe to it. So that was pretty cool. Yeah. I would say, you know, Honorable mentions the Car 85. Car 85 is a coup track. Yeah. Um, that's crazy that uh, it's, re- it's really just 12 tracks here. And yeah. on Spotify, there must be two versions because I'm my 13th track is I like grayed out, which is weird. Anyways, for me, the three tracks that I like. I like Blue Benz for sure. I like King's Disease, so one and two. And then I'm going to go ahead and go with The Cure as well. Um, nice. Those are those are the three tracks that I would call my favorites. I think my favorite verse on here is from uh, from the King, well, King's Disease, the first track, you know, where he says, Amazing Grace, I'm gracefully aging without masonry. I made more paper to play with, no rap in my playlist, old dimes on my day shift. So can I breathe? Can I walk? Can I speak? Can I talk? Can I floss without you wanting me outlined in chalk? And so on and so forth. Um, I thought that was a cool word play setup that he had there. And, uh, you know, it's cool, man. Nas just doesn't, uh, he's one of those guys that just doesn't seem to lose the ability to write uh, and rap. And he hasn't shown any slides of, or any signs of like degrading in his skills at this point kind of just sounds the same as he always has for like the last 10 plus years at least. So right. he's got that going for him. You know, those are my favorite yeah, tracks. That's my he favorite. Hasn't verse. Really lost a step yeah. either. No, he hasn't really lost a step. So he's at the mercy of his producers though. And mm-hmm. looks like he's doing a pretty good job still of picking those guys. Um, I like what he's done since Swiss Beats. Yeah, yeah, you're right, man. When he went into that Swiss Swiss Beats era, yeah. uh, it's been uh, a little bit, I guess, more inviting. <laughs> the, his records. Um, a little easier. Yeah, a little easier. Yeah, it's been cool though. Um, you know, we we're gonna check out part two, and uh, I'm interested right. to see how that goes. You know, like how does that sound compared to this one? You know, I've heard well, this album all... like seven times now, I bet. So, it should yeah. be interesting. It should, it should be a good listen, man. I'm looking forward to hearing it. Yeah. All in all, man, cool record to check out. Uh, it's one, uh, This might be the newest record we've done. This one came out just a year after the Snoop record that we did last week. So, oh, yeah, crazy. There you go. Yeah. Yeah. And then the next record will definitely be like the newest. So, anyways, let's wrap it up, man. What do you, you got any final thoughts here? Uh, no, not really, man. It was, it was fun to go through it. I don't hear a lot of non albums like that. So, yeah. um, good listen. Good, good podcast, man. I dig it. Yeah, it's a good listen. I like the album artwork as well. And, you know, Hit Boy put himself on my radar so you know props to him and i'm looking forward to hearing part two so oh yeah hey thanks for listening to the podcast this episode check us out on spotify iheart radio apple Podcasts, and uh our youtube channel hit subscribe on that sucker and keep us in the rotation man we'll see you next week this is Diz megatron signing off sound good
Way bound. Peace. Peace.